The envelope, please. I haven't said that in a while, have I? Nah, a week. It's still a week. <laughs> yeah, really. Let's see what we got today. Uh, do high-end headphones need maintenance? Well, you got to change the oil once a year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At least. Yeah. The coolant you can leave. Um, no, they're electric, so they don't. They don't have any oil. Yeah. Still got to oh, do right. tire rotation though, yeah. every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah tires. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Inspection. That's true. The tires do wear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know if people realize that, but tires do wear. They do. Yeah. As do leather. Mm hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> we've seen a few headphones come back for various reasons, and interestingly enough, to me. The vast majority of headphones we get back have no actual problems. Yeah. Usually it's actually an issue with maintenance more often than not. We try and to so avoid getting those back. We try to nip it course. in the bud by email or whatever yeah. before we have them sent back. It's it's usually someone who's more insistent on sending it to us. Mm -hmm. that yeah, that's get fine. Back and say, okay, but, now what? Yeah, right. But but you know, if it, if it feels it makes a customer feel better that it was checked out, but oh, yeah. I'm cool with that too. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. people think there's something wrong. And, Usually it's a system problem. But. So maintenance in general on headphones. I think most people would think that there's not a whole lot you can do. And to varying degrees, that may or may not be the case. It depends very much on the design. So some headphones are more tolerant of these kinds of things than others. Um, but if you live in particularly dirty environments or you drop them in a bag with magnetic particles or shavings or something <laughs> that gets into the driver that i see well that's very problem. rare but we have seen very one, rare yeah one or two pair there was one, one pair actually one that was pair? that i don't know what the guy did but there was like iron filings very and, fine and, yeah, iron really filings fine. that came in from the backside yeah. and uh basically pinned the diaphragm to the magnet right. and it's so they, you had they a, were very, very played, fine. but you had a little bass response. Right. Mm -hmm. It was weird as shit. It's nearly it's like, impossible to mitigate that. Must have worked in a factory or something. I don't know if that one came from China. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. so, so it must have know. worked in a factory that dealt with metal. Yeah, sharpening lawnmower blades, wearing a twelve sixty six or something. But yeah. avoid that. Yeah, well, that's rare. But yeah, yeah you definitely want to avoid, yeah, avoid metallics, uh, iron based particles. Sure. Yeah, I don't know any headphone that would tolerate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Everything with a magnet's going to basically. It's going to be a real problem. Yeah. Well, we did have one Diana where a guy, uh, he said he heard a noise in one of the channels and it turned out to be one hair that was stuck underneath the diaphragm, cur curled. And yeah, yeah like got jammed yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't even know how either because it got, it would have got past the... No, it went through the front. Through, yeah, the, through the the through the mesh of the yeah, your bag. How the hell did it get through the I mesh? I don't know, <laughs> but it did, and yeah. Uh, yeah so it's so one, going at as weird as one hell. little white hair. I yeah. almost can't even see it. Yeah, yeah, to get the non magnetic uh, tweezers out. Yeah, all right. Know. Which well, is good. They fixed. that came back. Yeah, that is a rarity though. Yeah, the yeah, only issues are pretty. Hard. I mean, only happen. A hair, only happened once. Yeah, and even a right. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, you play it loud, I'll just blow the hair right out. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, so in general, our drivers are very resistant to these kinds of things yeah. compared to other planar magnetics on the market, and especially electrostatics. Electrostatics can be very particular about these kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, that's a different, different ball. Right, very right. sensitive. Yeah. yeah so, humidity, temperature, all that. Yeah. Depends on the design, but yeah, typically <laughs> very thin films and very close proximity. Yeah. Of course, we can't discuss. What the, all their problems are because we don't we don't yeah, well, we, we don't, don't fix them we don't make our service them <laughs> yeah, yeah we I'm don't sure. really know yeah. but in terms of maintaining a headphone I mean that's something that I mean really that's the, the big ticket to me is just keep it clean keep it keep it away from particulate yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely keep tools away from it oh yeah uh, screwdrivers are no no yeah um, keep it away from mag magnetic y stuff yeah you really sometimes you don't think about it but. Yeah, they got pretty strong magnets in it. It goes from like you get something near it, like a screwdriver. It goes from you don't feel anything, and, yeah. and it goes right into it. And uh, yeah. you know, we designed it to try to avoid that. Particularly, Diana's got a a bit of a, a serrated shape to it uh, on the slot, so that you know, you you attempted to design that so that if if it did attract the tool, it probably wouldn't make it through into the diaphragm and and destroy it. It would yeah. catch it at the baffle, mm -hmm. uh, but the 1266 is more wide open. And it's, yeah, 1266. Yeah, it's obviously a performance optimized headphone, yeah. and so it's not designed for you to be like stabbing the thing with forks or something. Yeah. But we had a few customers that sent them back with. My kid put a spoon issues. in it. Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> the one guy <laughs> that kid put the spoon through it. Yeah. Uh, what else did we have? We had a few 
and you, interesting I, I, situations, I gotta, I gotta screwdriver commend, and stuff. I gotta, yeah, and I gotta commend yeah. the people that send them back. Most of them will, will tell you right up front. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, it wouldn't be obvious. It's but, pretty obvious. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, I don't know what happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, just a hole through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like it was pretty. It's like, like I screwed up. You know, actually, we appreciate that. You know, yeah. it's like okay, we will get it. You know, if yeah. we could do something, we could do something. But uh, but yeah, it's that kind of sucks. That's one of those oh shit moments. You know, it is what it is. I mean, you know, hey, we could fix it. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not the end of the world. I think uh, particularly with 1266 for maintenance, uh, I find um, that since the cups are so deep, you get like hairs and stuff just in the cup. So yeah. like wipe them out from time to time. That's pretty much it, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, what usually they, in the they, cup, like, like they, on the bottom part they collect. Uh -huh. like, like here, you get like... You know. Oh, just sitting in the like, earpiece. Yeah, 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 right. So yeah, just take them off, wipe them out. I guess if you're of an age where your hair's falling out, yeah. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. The best way to do it would be to remove the remove the pad. pop the ear pad off. Yeah, and wipe off the inside of the ear pad. Yeah, just like a dry microfiber. Yeah. You could take you could just take yeah. your your breath and just just blow on a driver, <laughs> yeah. just to clear anything. But I don't think it's really going to matter. Honestly, that thing will clear itself with some heavy base. Mm. It's a wide open. damp microfiber is probably the way to go, or dry if you don't need to remove anything. Yeah, it's depends what it is. Yeah. But we have seen quite a few people use leather conditioners yeah. and things like that, and sometimes they have abrasives in them, and people are like trying to buff things out of their headphone or something, they, like the ear pads. Yeah. Um, and we've seen quite a few customers actually that send their headphones back after they attempt to take care of the leather, and what they commonly do is they very aggressively and frequently clean the leather with either aggressive cleaners or abrasive cleaners, and it degrades and damages the leather. Anything that's that's designed to soak into the leather, it's probably a bad idea. Uh, yeah. You really need to stick to water, which won't do anything, it'll just evaporate, you know? We've seen plenty of people that have heavy use on their headphones, and the leather is almost always in very good condition. Um, with no maintenance, doing very no pretty much nothing other than maybe wiping it down yeah. now and then, that's all you really need to do, that seems to work great, but the few people that have been aggressive about their cleaning methods yeah. using isopropyl alcohol or submerging them in fluids or using aggressive leather cleaners and trying to like really coat it in to try to take care of the leather that seems to be a really bad play that doesn't seem to do anything positive for the leather yeah this isn't a sofa you yeah, know it's very thin yeah, yeah it's yeah it's not really made for that. and it's lambskin it's not it's not a thick leather so like i said it doesn't take much we should also probably talk about the headband too the leather headband with the uh with the stretch rings on the ends. And um, you know, that that's pretty durable. The leather side of that's pretty durable, the part that sits on your head. That you could be you could wipe down with something, it's not gonna affect anything. It's a sewn product, you know, you don't have to worry about adhesives, so letting go because of it's saturated. But still though, I would still stick to just water, you know, yeah. moist cloth. There's again, you know, they don't tend to get that dirty and they're easy to wipe off. It'll tolerate light cleaning occasionally, but um, if you're really buffing it up because you're trying to get something out, it's gonna wipe the dyes off just like any leather. Yeah, powder. right. Yeah, you'll start yeah. taking the color off it. Yeah. You know, and the uh, you know, and it, you know, you should treat it. I mean, some people discuss like they don't want to hang it on the uh, headband. We hang ours all the time, and you know, sometimes what we're seeing is some people are twisting the headband to tighten it. Like someone came up with an idea where you rotate the headband to tighten yeah. the bands and. You know, you're kind of doing things to it that probably we didn't think about doing at the time, you know. And um, I don't know how you'd explain it, but it's probably not a good idea to, to use it in a way that it wasn't intended. You know, it's potential for a problem. But for the most part, though, I mean, they're really durable, you know. But uh, I understand some people want to be careful with their product, and that's cool. If you, don't, if you feel yeah. more comfortable not hanging it up on something or laying it down on a table like this, Fine, no problem. It's uh, a pretty considerable amount of the headphones we see come back. There's um, damage to the underside of the metal headband because people hang it on that instead of the actual leather. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that, right on that center screw. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. But well, if you're going to hang it on something like that, you need to put ideally, a, a yeah, felt, stick yeah, a felt right. onto the stand, something soft, get something between it, you know. But it's we hang all of ours on the leather. And, never have any issues with that it doesn't people are concerned about it stretching out yeah uh, but you know like i always say shit happens that's so not really the case it's not the end of the world you can it's real easy to replace we have a video on our i think we have a video set up that shows you how if not we can email you a video and it shows you how to replace yeah. it if you don't know but it's real simple and you know it's 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 not a crazy expensive item but uh 
yeah, it's easy enough to replace if it's an issue. Same with the ear pads. You know, they're magnetically held, mm -hmm. and uh, bottom line is they wear out on you, and, you know, it is what it is. I mean, time for another set, and uh, uh, no big deal. It's leather. Well, there's also the cable part of the headphone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they don't really have much maintenance except, you know, don't kink them at the connections. Don't tow a car with them. Don't, don't tow things with yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. But occasionally we see some people that send back headphones, and the cables almost always survive this, but long term it will, of course, fatigue like any cable. Um, but you see people that are like bashing the cables into stuff, I guess, because they're like kinked right at the ends. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think sometimes they're using an aftermarket stand that's too short. Yeah, that's but a big it's headphone. the same case with Diana too. And so that yeah. the cables are sit bash sitting yeah, right into right. the table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Diana not so that. much. Yeah. But yeah. more in the twelve sixty. Seems like people put Diana down most of yeah. the time. Yeah. It's pretty durable they're tolerant to it but yeah. yeah of course over time that will shorten the well life. if you keep bending any conductor back and forth fatigue, in yeah. the yeah. same spot sooner or later you're going to break some strands or something yeah. it's just the nature of copper or yeah. any any wire so yeah you want to try to avoid continuously bending it back and forth right right at the butt yeah. end of the connector or something it's not a although good idea. it's probably important to note that the cables are much more durable than i think people expect oh they're very durable yeah, they're, yeah. They're we built durable. them like that yeah. yeah, I mean, we only seen a few that we had to replace the mini mini XLRs on. Yeah. Them. You know, they were just to a point where actually they get to they could get to a point where you'd have intermittent connection. Yeah, you know, you have intermittent sound. We had a few that was they basically broke just about every strand. In yeah, you gotta be yeah. really beating it up. Yeah, yeah. it it's, looks like yeah, you it's could destroyed. tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you look at it, you go, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. it's like yeah, it's I was all flapping crinkled. around. Yeah, you could tell it's like but the interior Diana, was gone. Everybody yeah. was worried about the two and a half millimeter connector on Diana, saying, "Oh, those are, are fragile." Oh yeah, we use that at the headphone. Right, but yet. Out of the number of units we've shipped, we have zero failures. Yeah, no, those, zero intermittent. Those cables, zero cables issues. are durable. Literally, yeah. never one. No, no issues. With connector, the connector those connectors don't break. Well, very, because very of the body, we made the body right. inset into Diana. It's a very so high body, quality connector. The body takes the hits, not the right. not the tip. It's mounted properly, yeah. and it's a very high quality connector. Yeah. Same with the headphone itself. We have no issues with the jacks either, because of it. Yeah. You know the two point five millimeter, and yeah. again, it's because right. of the way it's designed where connectors has to go inside her of Diana. So yeah, all the abuse is happening on the on the body of the connector, not on the tip. Yeah. You wouldn't see this in a fifty dollar headphone or two hundred dollar headphone. So I think the challenge is people are expecting us to just use a connector like everybody else is using in cheap headphones yeah. where they use a two point five making millimeter. Thing. This is a very high quality connector. Yeah we had molds made and we mold the damn yeah. thing on and we I mean everything right down intricate right down to the strain relief we use a very fine medical grade tubing and so in general, do headphones require maintenance? I don't think you really do. For the most part, uh, the few times I've seen people that attempt to maintain their headphones usually ends up worse than doing nothing. Uh, keep them relatively clean. Don't drag them across the ground or something like that. <laughs> Maybe try avoid running them over with Jeeps. Don't open. Yeah. Opening is yeah. probably a poor Once choice. Once you get in there, it's almost guaranteed yeah. it's going to grab onto your tool or you're going to screw something. There's nothing We've seen in there. A handful There's of those. nothing in there to do but ruin. There's Pretty nothing much. in there. And we, and people should keep in mind we torque all the screws factory set yeah so once you open it you'll never get it right again anyway you yeah. know so it's best to just don't open it people usually reassemble quite poorly yeah they just don't have the right tools i mean right. we're running 150 dollar torque screwdrivers just to just to, just to tighten the screws and we've got what five or six of them because every screw is a different torque setting yeah front back the, so yeah don't open them yeah <laughs> pretty much keep them relatively clean for the most part don't bang them in the stuff, drag them across the ground, keep them free from magnetic debris and whatnot. And yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do. There's very little you need to worry about, just common sense stuff for the most part. Yeah. Well, let's totally wrap, wrap it up. up. Yeah. So thanks for watching. And uh, by all means, subscribe to our channel. We're, <laughs> we're, rack, we're racking up the subscribers lately and it's, we love it. Yep. And uh, we love the comments, so please keep them coming. Take care, thank you.